You've probably heard of railguns, but these aren't your average guns. They employ the raw power of electromagnetism to hurl projectiles at mind-boggling speeds, all without using a single drop of explosives. Imagine the raw force when an object of that weight is propelled at such high velocity. For a sense of perspective, a railgun's projectile carries substantially more destructive power than a conventional gun of similar size, and this can be credited solely to its incredible speed. In a series of demonstrations, the US Navy's Office of Naval Research put an 8 megajoule railgun through its paces. This device fired projectiles weighing 7.1 pounds, serving as a precursor to their ambitious goal of a 64 megajoule weapon destined for deployment on warships. Later on, they pushed the envelope even further, conducting a test with a railgun that launched a projectile at an astounding speed of 8,270 feet per second, harnessing 10.64 megajoules of energy. These railguns are capable of firing projectiles up to 100 miles away, with care taken to aim out to sea to prevent any potential harm to life or property. One of the primary benefits of installing an electromagnetic EM railgun on a naval vessel is safety. This is because such weaponry doesn't require propellant to launch a projectile, nor does it store explosive rounds. You might be familiar with railguns from sci-fi films or TV shows like The Expanse, where military spaceships are armed with them. But the practical application of railguns is not without its challenges. To begin with, an EM railgun demands an immense amount of power to operate. As of now, it's a technology that's been under development and testing for over a decade, with costs exceeding half a billion dollars. Its current form requires a staggering 25 megawatts of power, which only technologically advanced warships like the Zumwalt-class destroyers can provide. These vessels, equipped with Rolls-Royce turbine generators, can produce as much as 78 megawatts of power. However, only three of these advanced warships are set to be produced. Secondly, the railgun's internal components are subjected to immense stress during operation, causing them to degrade rapidly. When the projectile accelerates down the barrel at high velocities, parts of the rails can be seen erupting as plasma. This is due to the intense friction between the sabot and the rails, leading to the gun's self-erosion. Despite these challenges, a less powerful railgun could be a viable solution. A model that can launch a projectile at 2,500 miles per hour, hitting targets 15 nautical miles away instead of 100, could still be remarkably useful. Such a weapon could potentially be mounted on existing warships, retaining the benefits of cost-effectiveness and eliminating the need for onboard explosives. However, the pace of railgun development in the United States has slowed down as focus has shifted towards more innovative projects. These include projects like extended range missiles and even laser weapons. A prime example was in 2020, when a Navy ship flexed its laser weapon system's muscle by successfully shooting down a drone in mid-flight. The laser system is part of the Navy's future plans to counter airborne threats at sea and even target smaller maritime vessels. Despite the exciting advances in technology, we can't disregard the tried and tested Tomahawk cruise missile. This is a long-range, all-weather, jet-powered subsonic cruise missile that both the US and Royal Navy have used to launch land attacks from sea-based platforms. This formidable missile navigates to its target using a technique called TURCOM, or terrain contour matching. Unlike their railgun and laser counterparts, missiles require manual reloading. This operation presents its own set of risks at sea due to the substantial weight of the missiles and the constant movement of the ship. Standard missiles, for instance, tip the scales at over 1,000 pounds, making rearming at sea a precarious operation that could potentially endanger both personnel and the vertical launch system. The US military employs the ingenious HIMARS system from naval platforms. The M142 High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, or HIMARS,
is a lightweight rocket launcher developed for the US Army in the closing years of the 20th century. This formidable system, anchored on a standard US Army M1140 truck frame, houses a single pod that can accommodate six GMLR's rockets, two PRSM missiles, or a single ATACMS missile. The flexibility of the HIMARS system to fire any weapon in the multiple launch rocket system family, even from seaborne platforms, affords the US a new level of versatility in land assault capabilities. The defense infrastructure of US Navy ships and aircraft carriers is meticulously layered. The last line of defense is the Phalanx CIWs, often referred to as SeaWiz. This system employs radar to lock onto incoming enemy missiles and neutralizes them with a six-barreled 20mm Gatling cannon, capable of unleashing a storm of 3,000 to 4,500 rounds per minute over a range of one to five miles. Although the range might seem modest compared to modern anti-ship missiles, the system compensates with its remarkable speed and precision. Further bolstering defense capabilities, aircraft carriers are equipped with a fleet of aircraft ready for deployment at a moment's notice. As soon as enemy forces pose a threat, F-18s or F-35s are swiftly launched to neutralize enemy facilities or vessels. These aircraft are armed by a team of ordnance men, easily recognizable in their distinctive red outfits. Employing an array of tools and vehicles, these men shoulder the critical responsibility of attaching heavy weapons to aircraft. While F-18s are gradually making way for the more advanced F-35 Lightning, they continue to play a significant role. As navies worldwide strive to enhance their battleships and aircraft's weapon systems, these instruments of warfare are becoming increasingly lethal. Amid such formidable advancements, one can't help but hope that these weapons are never truly deployed for their intended purpose. Thanks for joining us in this exploration of next-generation weaponry. If you want to continue your journey of discovery, feel free to check out our video on laser technology right on your screen. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more intriguing deep dives. Your support is much appreciated.